Hello there, everybody. This is Alex from Hardcoin Guide. It's being my guide for Dead Space 2 on Zell difficulty. Today we are doing Chapter 7 entitled Power from the Sun. I couldn't get that damn title right. I've... <laughs> I don't know why. It just doesn't sound right every time I say it. But yeah, whenever I hear that title, I think of God of War 3 with Helios, which is funny because that's kind of the the plan that the next game could eventually be. I'm not exactly 100% sure yet, but we'll figure it out. So you saw right there, there was a weird cut. I did come in here and I forgot there were enemies and I did die. So that's why that's pretty much cut. Uh, there's only just the two. It's a leaper and it's a crawling puker. So just remember where they come from and then you should be alright. Uh, just watch out mainly for the leaper. The puker is not really a big deal because he's already crawling. So you can pretty much just kill him kind of fast. But yeah, I had to look at that suit to make sure I was on the right track. Make sure these videos were lined up perfectly. And th if this was actually p chapter 7 or not, which it is. So, and of course, what they mean by power from the sun, they're pretty much talking about, like, going outside to the solar panel thing, and then just, you know, re-adjusting the trajectory of it and trying to turn on the power or whatever it was. Again, I don't remember, to be honest, but, yeah, coming out here, uh, a few things, of course, you're gonna, you know, shoot the canister things, and you're gonna let them kind of blow up and do what they need to do. I don't know what I'm doing here, I... I don't know why I was doing that for. I It took me a minute to kind of remember and realize, like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to go down here and lift the elevator. So I had a bit of an issue, and I think there might be a cut that comes up later. And it wasn't like me dying. Oh, yeah, but down here, schematics and power. No, that's the main thing that you want to kind of look out for. But you'll pretty much find that. Uh, go for the pulse rifle, you know, one-shot trick. There you go. Easy peasy. There's no, there's nobody out here to fight, as far as I'm aware. I never got to fight anybody, so if I remember correctly, I don't think there is anybody that could be out here. Usually there's lurkers, but there's not. Also, I remember the name of those enemies I was having trouble with last time with the stalkers. But yeah, anyway, so there will probably be, a, yeah, there's gonna be a cut, and the reason why is because I ended up actually, no, I did die. Yeah, I did die, and I restarted the checkpoint, and then for some reason the elevator was tilted, and I couldn't get onto it, so I had to restart the entire game. Or no, it was actually restart the entire chapter. Hopefully that skip didn't fuck anything up. I hope not. Um, that's more of like an on-me thing, so hopefully the video's not desynced. But anyway, this part is pretty hard. I don't think the elevator can crash itself. I don't, because if I'm, like I could have sworn that if these enemies attack enough, that eventually the elevator will slam, but I don't think that's the case. So basically the idea is that these guys are going to spawn typically from behind you. That's something you kind of want to keep your eye out for because a lot of the time they tend to kind of spawn from wherever you were just at. So keep that in mind and then just try to use a gun that doesn't really require, you know, heavy amount of bullets, I guess you could say. Something like the pulse or the plasma cutter where I pretty much kind of want to keep my bullets for it. So I'm using pulse rifles and kind of just end this situation. Uh, realistically, all you really need to do is just shoot them, and I don't think you really technically need to shoot them off, or, you know, break their arms or whatever, but it does help a lot to kind of just break their arms, so just try to go for it the best you can, and try to stay calm, have a lot of health, you know, have a lot of healing packs. If things go really bad, then just use stasis a lot, and like I said, they typically tend to kind of just come from behind wherever you were just at. But then eventually, once you start getting to, like, halfway through this crap, or not even halfway through, but, like, over halfway through it, uh, eventually three of them are going to spawn at once, and they typically all tend to kind of just spawn in front of you instead of behind you. So, there really is no major advice I can give besides maybe, like, run from one window to another and then just try to, you know, cut off as many arms as you can, if you can. If things get really bad, stasis works. You know, you could always use that, and then you could just try to aim your shots better. But do be careful, because these guys are pretty fast. And as far as I'm aware, I think they start to engage more often when you start to go up the elevator. You know, when you start getting closer to the end destination, they start to kind of add more enemies. And I think that's what makes that. I don't think it's the amount of enemies you kill. I think it's just they start adding more guys. But yeah, you have these canisters here that you can either keep and take with you for the next section, or you can just use them like I did here and just blow up the pods, just to save ammo. But really, really it's all kind of up to you. You have the stasis stuff as well that you can use to your advantage if you just want to kind of get through with basically almost little to no damage. Um, or just, well, not getting hit at all, I should say. 
they still will shoot even when they're in stasis, so do be careful of that. You can still get hit by it, but when they're in stasis, their pod shots are not going to actually, um, you know, come out as fast as they normally do. It'll actually slow those down, too. Make sure you grab this guy in here, in here on the bed, because that's something I forgot to do was I forgot to grab him. And that's kind of my fault. There's also a pod right there. That was something I didn't notice, and I actually did die to it. So that's the thing that happens. I may be mistaken, but as you can see there, my <clears throat> I think I actually, I think I probably just did the quick stasis myself. But I have a thing in where the game pretty much allows me to gain stasis over time. And if I remember correctly, I think Dead Space 2 just has that naturally. I think that's just a natural thing that it has. I don't think that was like an upgrade, if I remember correctly. Yeah, see, I keep saying that all the time. Like, oh, if I remember that, if I remember that. Like, motherfucker, you should have remembered all this when you did the damn guide for it. You know, this is stuff that I need to start, you know, learning better and understanding better. But, yeah, um, sorry. Uh, just, you know, come over here, grab this guy, and there you go. I'm going to mute my mic real quick, so give me one second. Damn, I wish this fucking mic mutant thing would work. I can always just cut out the commentary if need be. Not like it's a big deal. Uh, there's not much going on. You pretty much just have to get through this area and, you know, just blow up the stuff. You have a bunch of things you can kind of use to your advantage to just blow up the, the traps here. So there's no enemies in this room. I think it's the next room that has the enemies. The next room like this, this next hallway room. Uh, eventually, we're going to have to deal with stalkers. There is a power node on the door or on the wall. Sorry. And, uh, you know, just grab that. Make sure you don't forget about it. That's important. I mean, technically, you don't really need it. If you really wanted to play the game with no upgrades, that's on you. But I, I kind of want to play with upgrades. So this room used to be really devastating, but nowadays, not really. I don't know why, but it just became so nonchalantly not hard anymore. Out of Just out of nowhere. Uh, but you have these things, these explosive barrels here. And the game, I feel like, kind of wants to try to trick you into using them because... As you can see, the Leaper runs straight into the trap. He gets hit, and it does blow up uh, the explosive barrel. And it looks like the other explosive barrel must have blown up too, because I think that's what knocked it down, or it knocked out the window. And if you need the window, you know, just make sure that you try to blow up the traps before anything happens, before it gets too hectic. Other than that, I don't really think you need the window that bad. I personally don't feel like it's that useful. There's not much enemies to really deal with here, uh, unfortunately. I don't know if this is just like something that just randomly got updated or not, but I could have sworn, I could have sworn that there was like a ton of enemies that appeared. Like, I thought there was like tens of thousands of, these, of those, you know, damn leapers, and then there was like explosive guys just everywhere, and then, you know, of course the slashers and maybe even a puker. No, like, nobody. It just, that was it. I don't know why. Unless they just got wiped out in the window. I didn't notice them, but I doubt it. Because I would have probably seen them. But yeah, only really use it if you really need it that bad. And in order to keep that alive, just grab some objects and just throw them at the trap. And I think the left side trap probably had an explosive guy that did show up and he probably blew it up. And that's probably what happened. Well, the explosive itself, you know, blew it up. So... Yeah, and then when you come in here, you have some stasis things you can use to your advantage. And this was a fun trick I used to be able to do in Dead Space 1, but I don't really do it that often in Dead Space 2. And I think that's probably why I'm running out of ammo all the time. Um, and it's basically just stasis an enemy and then just go straight for melee. So if you were trying to save on ammo a lot of the time, then something that you could kind of just use to your advantage is the stasis module and just upgrade stasis and try to use that to go get melee. You mainly want to upgrade like duration and stuff. To make sure that they don't actually try to kill you fast. Also, this is a, a great example of Dead Space 2 kind of being wonky as hell. So I tried shooting this, the, the, you know, the, the claw at the guy. And then it just completely missed, it looked like. Like it shot off, like it ricocheted off the fence thing here. And then on top of that, I tried grabbing the guy's stuff that he dropped. And he just, it, the game just wouldn't let me have it. 
Also, when you do come up here, there will be a guy that does spawn behind you when you come to the bench, so just keep an eye out for that. And then there's two traps up in this area. So there's one right here, and then there's one near these lockers. Um, you'll know when they're traps because you'll hear the noise before you ever run into it. Typically, you tend to kind of hear it like a good amount of time before it appears, but it's better to be safe than sorry and just know that it's probably just going to be there. Just get, you know, just think like, ah, it's probably going to be there. And that's usually how I kind of figure it out. But that's, I think, like the only room that really does that much with traps of, with trap stuff. I don't think we see that very often. So. Imagine it, okay, this, this is going to sound really lame. But imagine like an open world Dead Space 4. You know, that'd be kind of weird as shit. Like having like scavenger outposts or whatever and they just have like a bunch of traps everywhere so yeah this is a pretty fun thing i ended up upgrading my plasma cutter to get all the way to the special and the reason why i want the special variant is because mainly of the fire element that comes with it so whenever you get the special upgrade you get fire attachment and it pretty much just has like a burning effect whenever you shoot enemies, and it's actually useful for two things. Not only does it do a little bit more damage to the enemies, which is, you know, nice to have, over time damage, pretty much. Not only does it do that, but on top of that, if an enemy dies, instead of stomping them or trying to hit them, it'll actually just burn them down. So, yeah. Now, in this O2 lacking area, I couldn't think of a good word to call it. Yeah, my brain just went straight to that. There's two stalkers in here. There's one, like, coming right from behind me, which, of course, you know, I got hit by because I didn't have a chance to escape out of that little thing. So just, you know, make sure you don't try not to get hit by this guy. Uh, but, yeah, there's only just the two, and then after that, it's pretty much just all said and done. And the first stalker will probably most likely try to run straight toward you. I don't think he's going to try to hide first. I think he just comes at you. And then once you come down here is probably when the second stalker will probably end up trying to chase you down. So he's, you know, hiding away. See if you can locate him before things get bad. Yeah, like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, what if you were on, like, a planet on Dead Space 4 and it was open world ish, and then you could find, like, outposts that were either kept by humans at one point or still are, and then, you know, there'd be, like, tons of traps set up or something, and you have to kind of, like, try to figure out your way to get through them. But I have a bad feeling, like, nowadays, if we had a game that was open world about Dead Space, they would probably ruin it. I just genuinely feel like that would probably happen. I'm not a big fan of open world games anyway. That's that's kind of my thing, regardless. But, sorry about that. If you heard that noise, that wasn't supposed to be in the fucking video, but that was a, a water bottle that I have that um, seems to have, like, a lot of air pressure inside of it or something. I don't know, so hopefully I didn't spook you, but yeah, the idea here is just you just want to put these things in the right order. It's not exactly the most obvious thing at first, but then when you kind of look around the room, you're like, oh, okay, and then it makes sense. But don't forget, you know, don't leave without hitting this, I should say. Don't forget about this. And then, if I remember correctly, I don't think the door opens. I think you have to just climb through the vent again. But yeah, I feel like everything's trying to stop me from recording today. I don't know what's going on. Like, my voice is all fucky, uh, I got my, you know, water bottle making noise, uh, my computer is just, you know, doing its fan thing like it always does, it's having trouble, it's, it's, it's having trouble breathing like it usually does, I haven't dusted it in a while, so that's probably why, I should probably do that actually after this, yeah, probably, but yeah, back to what I was talking about, if we get anything Dead Space 4 related, Please don't make it like God of War 2018. Please don't do that. Again, it's not that 2018 was really that terrible. It's just that, I mean, realistically, it just wasn't enough. It just felt like padding the game. And then it ends up just getting to the point where we just pretty much just enjoy Ragnarok more anyway. Um, so, yeah, this guy will spawn in. Just be careful of that. He doesn't really have an advantage. Uh, he has a disadvantage of just falling into the, into the room and having little to no time to actually act also this is just a me thing but i'm not sure what the hell um the blue signal is supposed to mean i i've never figured that out i don't know what that's supposed to mean does it mean like okay you're getting close but you're not really there or does it just mean like 
I don't know, like maybe a secret object opens, but I've never found anything that could be a secret. And I think the only way to get into the second room is to actually, you know, get the green to to work. Or get it to turn green, I should say. So, I don't know. I'm going to mute my mic again real quick. Sorry. Hey, it's better I do that than have it in commentary. Sorry about this video being so weird. I mean, I did just wake up, so that's probably a good reason why everything's going to be kind of off. Um, so, yeah, coming into this area, you're going to be immediately attacked by a couple of slashers, an elite and a regular one. One from the left, one from the right. Uh, just stay back here, pick them off. You know, go for the legs, and then chop off an arm, and then shoot the other one. I'd say go for the elite first, or basically just go for whoever's charging at you first. And use stasis. Don't don't be like me and, you know, actually just try to use stasis as much as you can. Or, well, use stasis, don't be like me, and don't use it. That's what I'm trying to say. Because so I'm kind of dumb. Also, I think the amount of these things you destroy will determine how many enemies are going to start spawning. Because once you break, like, a couple of them... Uh, the first guy will spawn in, and then, like, another guy will spawn in. It seems. At least, that's what it seems like to me, so. As far as I'm aware, that seems to be the case. Uh, just the first two guys, like, a couple of slashers, not too hard. And after that, I believe there should be... I could have sworn there were some leapers that end up spawning. But, yeah, I would... If things get kind of hectic, I would say run into this room, because it's got a lot more room to it, quote-unquote. It's a lot easier to kind of just be around rather than um, the other area that just has no good spots for cover. Not even just like cover, but no room, really. It just doesn't have like a lot of room to kind of breathe and get around. I guess it just, I guess it just was the two slashers. Am I going absolutely insane or is like the PC version just much different? Also jump scare for you. Still kind of gets me every once in a while, actually. Well, not like... You know, I don't piss my pants in fear. It's just more like a, ah, God damn it! you know, like I forgot that was there. <laughs> kind of thing. Like a, like a slight startle, slight jump. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot that there was a pod there. So, yeah, be careful of that. I ran up here just balls, you know, balls blazing, and I didn't realize that there was actually pods in the room. So, oops. Uh, there's one right here. Of course, you know, you could do the pod trick. Just run up to him, let him blow himself up. There you go. Easy peasy, let him squeezy. And then there's another pod, and then there's these little turds. I'd say just avoid them. Just don't worry about them. Just get the hell out of here. Put them in stasis and run away. They can't run through the rooms. They can't break through vents. Just fuck them. I think in Dead Space 2, they do drop items, but I'd still just say, you know, screw them. Just get out of there. Don't deal with them. They're too much of a pain. If you have to deal with them, then go for Pulse Rifle. So this little area is going to be a little tough uh, because of the Leaper. Make sure you attack the Leaper probably when he's on the wall that's probably your best option so that way because he usually jumps to the wall first uh, that's probably your better option to take care of him before it gets too late and there will be a second leaper that does spawn I believe there's like tons of lurk or so so I could have sworn there was a second one maybe there wasn't see now now I'm getting my videos all mixed up because I remember dying to up oh, there he is yep there's the second leaper okay cool so I ran into Anima at the worst time, <clears throat> and that's just a thing that's just going to happen. I tend to have that happen quite often anyway. But yeah, so, you know, second leap responds in. Make sure you are careful of him and just watch out for that, I guess. And then other than that, that's pretty much everybody. You got a couple of stasis things down here you can use if you need free stasis. You could shoot him, you could blast him at him, you know, whatever the case. If things get kind of rough, I'd say just restart checkpoint. If you take too much damage, just restart your checkpoint. That's usually what I do when I get to a, a spot that I just am not having a very fun time with. I usually just restart the checkpoint completely. So, alright. Next up, you're going to take the elevator up. Uh, not really an elevator, but you're going to take like the, the thing up here. And then you're going to have these things to kind of just readjust. Pretty easy stuff. Just... Try to push him toward the nearest, like, solar panel. That's kind of the idea. You just... Or the nearest reflector, I, I guess I could probably say that. And then, um... You see that big, giant, gelatinous blob of stuff there? I don't know if you caught that or not. Because I didn't at first, because I kind of forgot about these guys being here. Also, uh, I'd recommend stomping your crates. Don't 
do the kinesis thing because if you do the kinesis thing, they're just going to blow up. I forgot a crate. God damn it. Uh, but yeah, this pod guy will spawn. Just shoot him a few times. When they start shooting these little tentacle things at you, just dodge to the left or right, but have your sprint on while you're dodging. And then you'll pretty much just never get hit. That's kind of the idea. Just, you know, shoot him down. Pretty easy. It's mostly just dodging the tentacle things that kind of become a problem. That's the only thing that I can say about that that would be difficult would just be those things chasing you down. And the farther you are away, typically you can have a better chance to kind of just avoid them. But they are homing, though. So be, do be careful of that. They are homing. Just remember that that's a thing. Uh, let's see. I think this is one of those ones i got to readjust as well. You pretty much know whether or not you have to readjust it or not if, well, you know, it's looking in a different direction. And then on top of that, it's not... Um, you know, it has the kinesis thing on it. I think, yeah, I guess it's only like the two we have to reactivate. I thought there was three. This Mandel effect shit's really bugging me right now. <laughs> this whole thing is really pissing me off. Something else to keep in mind is when it comes to Dead Space 2, O2 is so common. Also, I guess I somehow made it to where the game just gave me free O2 forever. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what kind of bug this is. It just... I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know how I, I activated that, but I'll take it. So, O2 is a thing in this game that you don't really need to upgrade, like, hardly ever. Yeah, there was that elevator section. Uh, so, I'd say, if anything, like, maybe one or two upgrades would probably be enough to kind of get you through it, possibly. But, as far as I'm aware, I don't think you really ever need to upgrade O2 nearly as much as you do in, like, Dead Space 1. Because you don't really go outside as much in Dead Space 2. Well, I mean, you have your times where you do, but you're not really out there for forever. You're not really doing the engineering stuff, quote-unquote, as much as you think you probably would. Once all said and done, you're going to blast off like Team Rocket and then just make your way to the giant ring thingy. And, yeah. So, this, I think, was actually in the trailer, wasn't it? I think this was in the trailer for the, for the game. It had the Smashing Pumpkin song, Rat in the Cage. That's what it's called, right? Not Rat in the Cage. What? No, I think it's kind of different than that, though. Fuck. <laughs> I'm supposed to know this, because I actually like that song. I actually kind of like Smashing Pumpkins, and I'm supposed to know this. But I remember uh, seeing the trailer for Dead Space 2 and being really hyped for it. Get really excited. Watching it on my grandma's computer. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a weird, vivid memory, but that's just one of those things. Luckily, that part's not too long, and that's another cool section. I kind of enjoy that one, but I have nothing to really commentate about because, well, it's nothing really to talk about. Just avoid avoid things as much as you can. This does lead straight into the next chapter, but I'm just going to include this section just because of it. Or just because it doesn't exactly show the next chapter name just yet. It's going to be a bit before it does, so. But as far as I'm aware, we are probably kind of in the next chapter ish doesn't matter doesn't matter let me just go ahead and the video is already fucked anyway already you know messed up everything regardless in terms of uh noises in the background like you guys can probably hear my fan going off i sure as hell can yeah there you go bought a couple power nodes bought a health pack bought a couple ammo that kind of thing just in case because if i remember correctly uh, there's the horde fight. So, yeah, this is the horde fight. Make sure you stock up on stuff. You don't need to be that crazy about it, but just make sure you have enough stuff to kind of go around. Sorry, I keep... Yeah, I know. Take care of it next time. Uh, video's already fucked anyway. I don't care anymore. <laughs> People are already tuning out at the five-minute mark. So, coming into here... You know, the swarm's going to start spawning in, and I use Pulse Rifle for mainly this exact reason. This is why I run Pulse Rifle, so I can deal with these little shits better and just a little bit easier. This is a timed event, and as far as I'm, I know, I don't think killing the enemies is really going to, you know, make it go by any faster. I'm pretty sure the whole thing is timed. Your best bet is to always just look behind you and understand the waves. So basically, you're going to have the Swarm spawn first. After that, it's going to be a Slasher and then a Leaper. And then after these guys are dead, you're going to have a couple more enemies that are going to spawn, which we'll see in a second. So as long as you know like which enemies are going to spawn and when, 
is kind of a good idea to get a you know to understand when or like who's going to show up so next up you know when you get that next voice call slasher some swarm and then a puker the puker is what you really kind of want to get rid of first because if he shoots you with his slowdown that's going to suck um and then the slashers are also high priority as well and leapers are definitely definitely even higher priority this is when i would suggest having stasis just up the ass and then coming like near the door to make sure that you're close to getting ready to kind of leave standing here might not be the best option but it definitely makes it to where you end up getting a choke point so that way these guys do kind of have to funnel in to try to attack you so something to kind of keep in mind yeah i didn't even see the puker that far back but this is why i keep a plasma cutter ammo ready is just for that very sake of enemies running too close to me or running toward me and i can get a quick knockoff on their legs did i never edit this part out are you shitting me? I thought I deleted this part. What the fuck? Ah, oh, I am so sorry. This entire section was meant to be cut out. But now we have to sit here for the next two minutes listening to Ellie talk. Son of a bitch. Well, if anything, I'm just going to probably end commentary here then. And let it be that. So, hope you guys enjoyed uh, as much as you could. And I'll see you next time for the next chapter. And as always, take care. Everybody. I'm sorry. And here I am again. I've just walked one big fucking circle today. Can't get through this. Let's figure out how to meet up. Right. Um, there's a, a central hub in the main facility. Here are the coordinates.